HTTP2, or H2 for short, is a major revision of the hypertext transfer protocol that improves the performance of the web. It uses the primary protocol and multiplexing to achieve that. In this video, I want to go through how HTTP2 works, its pros and cons, and I want to show a performance difference between HTTP1 and HTTP2 using uh, some sample code that I have written. Right, so if you're interested, stay tuned. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Hussein, and this channel we discuss all sorts of software engineering by example. So, if you want to become a better software engineer, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. With that said, let's just jump into HTTP2. So, I have made a video detailed in the HTTP almost like a crash course where I dive into like I I went into an overview of the HTTP evolution from 1.0, version 1.0, version 1.1, 2, and then almost talk about 3, but I didn't go into details on each of them. So this video is going to be a detailed uh, explanation of how HTTP 2 works, essentially. All right, so if you're interested, stay tuned. The first thing we're going to discuss is how HTTP 1.1 works. Obviously, this is a, we need to know how this the normal HTTP works. Then we're gonna discuss how HTTP 2 works, right? And then we're gonna discuss a little bit of the pros and cons of HTTP 2, because nothing is perfect, obviously. And uh, I'm gonna talk about the H1 versus H2 performance test. I'm gonna do a test, like performance test between, uh, we're gonna load a web page that I have written, loads like 100 images, in H1 in HTTP version 1 and HTTP version 2 and compare the performance difference. All right, so HTTP 1.1 builds on the HTTP protocol, which is a very simple request response system, right? So if I'm gonna make a request and I expect a response in return. So how does that work? First of all, there all of this goes into a TCP connection. So a client like me, a browser, for example, will establish a TCP connection to the server. It's a stateful two-way communication, but the hypertext protocol uses it as just a request response. So, and here's the rules of our request response. You make one request to get an index.html, and guess what? That pipe is busy it's used you cannot do anything with it right you cannot send another request as long as your request is processing this socket is busy right obviously that is not true because that socket is very underutilized <laughs> if you think about it tcp is capable of much 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 more than that but that's how it was built so you make a request you cannot send any other request you wait, you get back the document that you requested, right? Whether this is an actual file on the back end or a, 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 requ a REST request to the database to give you some, some sort of a results, right? JSON document, okay? What happened if I'm going to send multiple requests? Like, let's say I parse that index.html. I found that I need main.js, CSS, and JPG. Well, you do the same thing. You request main.js, you wait. Once it gives back, right, you make a request for the other file and so on, right? Obviously, it is slow. So browser says, we have a solution. We're going to hack this thing. How do we do it? We're going to establish six TCP connections. And that's what browsers do today. If, you're use, if your web server supports HTTP 1.1, it actually establishes at six TCP connections. And you are almost oblivious of this. You do not know as a customer, as a user. You do not know that you're actually ha using six TCP connections. You're, well, you're visiting a page, and that page makes a lot of requests, right? And you make a GET request, and that GET request might turn into multiple GET requests, sometimes POST requests, depending on what you're doing. And that, obviously, goes shoveled down into the browser's code base where they actually is establish a 6 TCP connection, and they just funnel their your request to these. 
All right, and then it's okay, okay, one is busy, I'm gonna use another one. And that seems to be solved the problem, but still you're working around the problem. What if you have more than six resources to request at the same time, right? You're gonna get the same problem essentially, right? So that's that's one of the hacks that the browser started to do, right? And you can build it as a client, you, if you're building an HTTP client, like a mobile application, you can do something similar to this, but it's very expensive if you think about it. There there's uh, uh, um, resource descriptors being held on the server, and there's a lot of memory you wasted, really. Because a single TCP connection, you can do so much with it. And Google realized that and developed Speedy, which turns into HTTP2. So how does this work, HTTP2? All right, HTTP2, how does it work? It works very similarly from a client perspective. You still make GET requests, you still make POST requests, but you're still using a single TCP, very efficient socket, the same socket you're using. And the client in this case actually just shoves as many requests as you, as you, as you make requests, all these requests goes into the pipe at the same time and that is called multiplexing so the first question is hussein how does the server know that oh you just received four requests how does the server know that oh this request is for this for this request and this request is for this request how does it know right and when and when you when you respond how do you how does the client know oh this response actually for for the request for the main js and this request response is for this and that's where we need the stream id tag and this is an internal thing that we do not see as clients, as users of HTTP2. Every time we make a request, each packet, each HTTP packet, will be tagged with the stream ID, right? So git main JS will be assigned the stream one, git main CSS will be assigned stream two. If you're making a REST call, for example, that queries the database, that will be assigned a stream ID, right? And that request will be assigned stream ID and the server will start processing one at a time, right? Could be in parallel, few simple multi-threading, right? Or even in the main loop, right? It doesn't really have to be multi-threaded. And once you get that result, you shove all the results back, again, tagging them with the correct stream ID. So the client can look at the request or the response. So the client can look at the response and know what was that response for, for actually, right? Which request was it for, right? So that was called multiplexing. And we're tagging everything with the what? With the stream ID, essentially. So we know. Right, so that's just the trick of HTTP, and that allows powerful stuff. Allows compressing, not just for the data, because we do compressing with HTTP one, right? It's just we cannot compress the headers because we use them to to identify stuff. But with the the idea of streaming, we already have an identifier, so we can compress headers. We can compress also the data. Sweet. What? other stuff HTTP2 gives us. This is another thing that HTTP2 gives us. This is not enabled by default, right? The multiplexing, the compressing, you, the streams and all that stuff, you get it all the time, right? If you enable HTTP2. And we're gonna show an example, hopefully, with Caddy, all right? But you can also do an HTTP2 with push. So what does that mean, right? So if, if your server is smart enough and you can configure it in a way, so that you can make one GET request to have an index to HTML. And the server, or you as a web administrator, says, okay, if someone requests the index to HTML, they might also need the main JS file and the CSS file and these images. And so just push them all together, right? So you can actually push multiple responses for a given request, right? That can get a little bit tricky if the client doesn't support HTTP2, right? Like, because we're, we're used to make a request to get one at a time. So how does that translate if you're responding multiple times? So that you have to configure the client to actually listen to that stuff, to server pushes as well. Okay, so that's another advantage, but it also can turn into a disadvantage, which we can show earlier. All right, let's talk about the pros. What's good about HTTP2? HTTP2 is a great technology, right? It's amazing, right? Because now you get multiplexing over 
single connection and you we know what multiplexing is you have a huge set of requests get and pause and fetch and do multiple stuff and i don't know do a put request and all of them can be multiplexed to a single tcp connection instead of them being waiting for the responses to come for each, each request, right? There is no head of line blocking essentially, right? So it's just every request can be just shoved into the TCP connection and we can shove a lot of stuff, right? Of the TCP connection. It could be too much too, right? Which is kind of get into dangerous stuff if you're shoving too much, right? So you have to be careful. Compressing, you can now compress headers and data because now we tag stuff with a stream ID. That's beautiful stuff so we can compress this data and we know that oh this request is for this so we can compress it and we can decrypt it decrypt it we can decompress it at the other end right again we the client and the server has to know how to deal with http2 obviously to to communicate http2 it's not just the server has to support http2 the client also has to support it. and when i say client i mean usually browsers browsers now all browsers support http2 but also other clients like curl curl i don't i don't believe curl support http2 right so how does that work right or 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 your or your c sharp http request library doesn't support http2 obviously right so you need a library that supports HTTP2 to understand how to, to, to do the binary stuff and all that stuff, right? Servers push. Server push is a very beautiful feature where you make one request, you get 10 as a result, right? Could be a disadvantage as well. We're going to talk about that. Uh, HTTP2, I think now the, the consensus, consensus is now HTTP2 is always secure. You cannot do HTTP2 on, on just uh, port 80. Okay, it has to be 443. It has to be secure all the time. Okay, that's the design decision. I and I do agree with that design decision. And uh, there is there is there is a benefit be, because of that. The second bullet here, the fourth bullet, fifth bullet. I I don't I don't know how to count, guys. Right. So the fifth bullet is is this right. Because it's secure by default, now you have TLS, and we talked about TLS, guys. I'm gonna reference it here, right? Now you have TLS, and the beauty of this is that TLS has something called extensions, and in the extensions, you can inject your own work to be done while TLS is happening. This is so powerful because TLS needs to happen anyway because it has like a two two round trip, one round trip, so like one request and and response. Okay, and ALPN application layer protocol negotiation can be used as just an extension of TLS and can be used during TLS. Why are you talking about this, Hussein? How do you, as a browser, know to upgrade to HTTP2? How do you know that the server supports HTTP2? You don't, right? It actually happens during TLS which is powerful stuff. The server will tell you, hey, by the way, I support this stuff. Do you support it? And they will negotiate that in the same handshake while they are doing their encryption. So powerful. You don't, you guys, you do not know how powerful this stuff is. It is so powerful. And instead of having another, like an upgrade request, it's like, hey, I want to upgrade to HTML2 and then wait and then our upgrade, right? You don't have to do that. You can do it during uh, TLS, right? And HTTP, and the browser will say, "Hey, by the way, if you support this, I I support HTTP two. So if you're if you're down, we can go together, right? We can do HTTP two. So that's happened. Cones, what's bad about this? So server push can be actually abused, right? If you, if 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 configured incorrectly, and the reason is the server will blindly push multiple resources to the client regardless if the client needs it or not okay because the client might have cached them in the previous request so the, the server will be will be pushing these details to this to the client right and that will cause uh 
this obviously an extra bandwidth unnecessary bandwidth right if you keep doing this over and over again you can saturate the network and things can go really really bad if you like especially if you configure things to send a huge amount of files that the client doesn't really need right and multiply that by 100 clients what did you do uh here's another one right if you're in a mixed mood right where uh, there is HTTP 1 and HTTP 2 involved, it can actually get slower for you. So here's an example, right? Let's suppose you you know that your backend server supports HTTP 2, right? And you built it and you have the browser or even you have installed a browser, uh, a client that supports HTTP 2 and you tested it, but then you put it, you said, oh, by the way, oh, I, I think I need a load balancer. You, you stop, you put a layer seven load balancer in front of your web servers, like three web servers, right? And guess what? The layer seven load balancer happened to not support HTTP2. It doesn't know how to. You just screwed yourself because that says, okay, the, the request, you just wasted a huge amount of energy on nothing. Because what happened here, you're going to communicate with the load balancer, which terminates the TLS, obviously, because it's a layer 7 load balancer, right? And that will communicate with you as HTTP 1. And you're going to do the six connection hack thingy. And then oh, the load balancer will turn it on and says, okay, I have to connect with the HTTP, the back end. And God knows if it supports HTTP2 as a client, and if it doesn't, even worse, you just wasted a lot of energy doing this thing, and you just wasted. So you really need to be careful if your intermediate proxies or reverse proxies actually support HTTP2. The solution to this is not very hard. Just use a layer 4 uh, load balancer, right? Like HA proxy support that. And what will it do is just essentially is just like be a blind TCP connection, right? It's just, it will just shovel, shove your TCP connection across the pipes, essentially almost natting them to the destination and you're good, right? And that doesn't involve anything else. All right, let's do a demo, guys. All right, guys. So here I have two web servers running the same kind of content, right? This is Michael Scott with i broke in the, his image into 100 images i think this is 100 images yeah it's 100 images and i've hosted this on a http2 web server and http1 web server and we're going to compare the performance of both obviously if i refresh now this is the local host in http in port 215 is the is the http1 right and this which is a site i have hosted on noip.com, this is running HTTP2. So how about we test, guys? Now, if I refresh, obviously, it's going to be instantaneous because everything is cached, right? So that's useless. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to more tools, go to developer tools, and go do here. And then I'm going to start recording the activity, right? And then when I start recording the activity, you can start, you can see, right? And it took, this is HTTP 1, right, obviously. I'm going to do the HTTP 1 first with normal speed. And it took 94 milliseconds to load almost all of them, right? And you can see that this is using six, six TCP connections, right? It's sending them in parallel, right? So, so 94 milliseconds with a normal online connection, right? And I'm disabling the cache so it doesn't cache anything. So I'm gonna go and change that to fast 3G. And I'm gonna refresh that again and see how, how it performs, right? Let's remember the numbers, 94 for online. And then, look at that, it's churning. You can see, you can see, look at that. It's downloading. Oh my God. Okay, and it's done. And it took, not that bad, right? It took 10 seconds to finish the whole thing, okay? Yeah, it's okay. And let's do it finally on the slow 3G, all right, and refresh, right? I'm going to cut the video if it's too long, obviously, so don't worry about it, guys. As you can see, it's making the requests. 
and it's slow, right? So let's remember the numbers. And you can see like these are pending because they cannot go anywhere until the requests are actually completed, right? Because they have only a six connections to work with. And that's the, the trick here. They don't have any other connections to work with. And you can see as like the connections are coming in, which is pretty cool. All right. I think it's almost done. It's still, okay, it's done. It took 35 seconds to load the whole thing. How about we do the same test on HTTP2 and see how it does. The first test, we're going to do it online. Record. All right, so that took 171 millisecond. And guys, you got to take this with a grain of salt a little bit because here we're, go we're doing a t an extra TLS handshake, which we don't do here, right? This is going through a DNS request. This is going localhost. So this number is actually slightly more but it's not really fair comparison. If you if you want to have a real comparison, we have to host both of, both of them, right? And it, we have to have both of them on TLS, right? But you can get the idea. Now let's try a, sl uh, a fast 3G and see how it performs. It's doing and it's done. Man, that took only 2.7 seconds to load the whole thing. Let's let's do it again. Look at that. And look at that. 2.7 seconds load the whole thing in 3G versus 10 seconds. Is that is that the numbers? I'm gonna put a table of the numbers hopefully once I'm done by right, comparing the results. And let's finally do the slow 3G and see how it performs. Right? Uh oh. Uh oh, HTTP, HTTP2, HTTP2. Oh my god, Michael Scott. That's what she said. Look at that. That's powerful. It took 10 seconds versus 35 seconds. And as you can see, guys, it is a huge performance difference. Plus the additional TLS handshake, plus the additional internet traffic to go through to the dns hit that and come back to hit my server all right guys uh, that's it for me today hope you enjoy this video here's michael scott for you guys all right and uh i'm gonna uh, the, t the final results should be here now i'm a decent editor i'll show, show you a table of the final result hope you enjoyed this video give it a like share it with your friend i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome